I'm doing very well, sir. How are you doing? Excellent. Topic from today. We're focusing. We felt positive today because we hit a thousand shows, and we're well aware, as is everybody else, that the fact that this show hit a thousand shows is probably a remarkable stat in the world oh, that we live in. Congratulations, guys. Thank you very much. And so we were focusing the positives of uh, of 2020, and there are many. For me, I think the a big positive for 2020 is just the available free time that I wouldn't have normally otherwise had. You know what I mean? Just to yeah. do kind of whatever, whether that's working on projects around the house, trying to learn a new instrument or read or just do whatever you want. I it's, saw you it, made it soup just, the other day. <laughs> yeah, big soup guy. Soup season is here. And uh, yeah, learning to cook a little bit was, uh, I would say, a, a, a bright side of 2020. So yeah, having some time to do some of those things and maybe... You know that we wouldn't otherwise have the time to do is, is has been nice. You know what? That's I'm glad you brought that up because that didn't come up this morning. I think that a lot of people and and it probably had an impact on people differently. But with the with the the more time that we had with the lockdown and like for us, we're doing a lot less events, so our lives are a lot less busy, or we have more time on the weekends and things like that. You have a chance to sit and and, and reevaluate the things that are important to you, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, like, like you, we're also doing way less events, meaning no events where we <laughs> normally would have plenty. So, uh, it's been interesting to be able to use the time to do different things that maybe you wouldn't have otherwise chosen to do in any other given year. So I think that I, if anything, I appreciate the extra time that 2020 has afforded me. And Jimmy appreciates our promise to him when he dies. Which is? We're going to burn his apartment with flamethrowers. Flame. Oh, nice. I'm going to get a call one day. Doesn't matter. Like, yeah. this you, could be years from now. I could be living in another city. Locke's going to ring me up. Grant. Uh, Jimmy's dead. And I'll just hang up the phone, get in my car, drive, drive to the den of sadness. You realize I'm going to live and both of you guys. Burn it down. <laughs> like, I have lizard <laughs> blood, remember? I heal quickly. Yeah. But based on the amount of extra time you've had, that fire is going to be intense. <laughs> Because semen lights up on fire. I like, oh, was going to say, uh, there's no black lights. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to throw a term at you here quickly. It's something that I saw on the Oilers Nation uh, feed. Mick Nuge. And why is everybody excited about Mick Nuge? Well, having Dominic Cahoon sign up, the, Ken Holland just signed Dominic Cahoon for a one-year $975,000 deal um, on, earlier this week. So that allows... Ryan Nugent Hopkins to probably stick with Connor McDavid, which is important because Connor hasn't really had any consistent wingers um, over the past couple of years. And I think that having a player that can score and pass like Nuge alongside of him will he's make a similar his job player. a lot easier. Yeah, right? Like he's a similar, smaller, good mitts, a uh, great defensive player. Like So that, that does fill that hole for, for, for Nuge. Yeah, exactly. And like Nuge plays very well with Drysaddle and Yamamoto. They were one of the best lines in the NHL in 2020 before the pandemic pause. But having some more depth on the wings, which the Oilers do this year, I think given the limited cap space that Ken Holland had available to play with, he did a good job of bolstering the depth. I think that that's just going to create some more options. And McNuge or Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Connor McDavid being a duo on that first line is certainly one of them. Um, what do you think George LaRock's chances are against Mike Tyson? <laughs> you know what? I uh, So we posted something about that yesterday on OilersNation.com. And then what I did was I went and looked at some old Mike Tyson videos where he would just slip a punch and absolutely devastate someone's face by caving it in. Yep. And it's just like... I admire the balls on George, you know what I mean? Because even though Mike Tyson is not the guy he was in the 90s, he is still a terrifying man, and I would not want to step anywhere near a ring with him. So <laughs> I admire George for doing it. They're doing it for charity, but... Uh, is it going to happen? Do I, why do happen? I not believe this? Like, I, don't, I don't think it'll happen either. No. I admire it. I love George's passion. I think that he would get in there and give it his all, but you know, boxing against one of the greatest of all time would not be an easy challenge by any means. I know you are not going out, and we're not going out much, but uh, we are tentatively trying to make plans to do something for that Tyson, uh, Jordan's, uh, Joe, Joe, Roy, Roy, Jones Jr. Roy, Roy Jones Jr. on November 28th. I've been drinking, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's our thousandth show today, so. 
We've had some beers. Yeah, that's on November 28th, which is a Saturday night. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing that. I, as much as I don't believe it'll ever happen, I would like to see Tyson kick George LaRock's ass because he's also about a foot shorter than a, a, a LaRock, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's an interesting idea. Uh, you know, I just, I, I don't know how it would go. I don't know um, how realistic it would be for George to win a fight. I mean, I, Brad I don't know. said if, if he put he Tyson on skates, it would work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know. I don't know what, how it would go. I mean, maybe we're underestimating George uh, widely, but I just, I can't see it. You know what I mean? Like, Mike Tyson was devastating. Yeah, no and kidding. As a, even though he's, like I said, even though he's older, he could probably still throw his mitts around way harder than anybody else. Listen, my friend, always appreciate your time. That's Bag Milk from Oilers Nation.